We're back at Supercomputing 22 in Dallas, winding down the final day here. A big show floor behind me, lots of excitement out there, wouldn't you say, Dave? Just oh, it's crazy. I mean, any anytime you have NASA presentations going on and, and steampunk uh, iterations of cooling systems, that the, you know, it's, it's the greatest. I've been to hundreds of trade shows. I don't think I've ever seen NASA exhibiting at one like they are here. Uh, Dave Nicholson, my co-host, I'm Paul Gellin, and with, with us is Satish Ayer. He is the Vice President of Emerging Services at Dell Technologies. And Satish, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Thank you, Paul. What are emerging services? Uh, emerging services are actually uh, the growth areas for Dell. Um, so it's uh, telecom, it's cloud, it's edge. So we, we especially focus on all the growth vectors for, for the company. And one of the key areas that comes under your jurisdiction is called Apex. Now, I'm sure there are people who don't know what Apex is. Can you just give us a quick definition? Absolutely, so Apex is actually uh, Dell's foray into cloud and uh, I manage the Apex services business, so this is our way of actually bringing cloud experience to our customers uh, on-prem and in college. But, but it's not a cloud, I mean you don't, you don't have a Dell cloud, right? It's, it's uh, infrastructure as a service. It's infrastructure and platform and solutions as a service, yes. We don't have our own equivalent of a public cloud, but we want to, you know, this is a multi-cloud world, so technically customers want to consume where they want to consume. So this is Dell's way of actually, you know, supporting a multi-cloud strategy for our customers. You you mentioned something just ahead of us going on air, a great way to describe Apex, to contrast Apex with CapEx. Mm -hmm. There's no C, there's no cash up front necessary. Yep. I thought that was great. G yeah. Explain that. Explain that a little more. Well, I mean, you know, one one of the main things about cloud is the consumption model, right? So customers would like to pay for what they consume. They would like to pay in a subscription. They would like to not prepay capex ahead of time. They want that economic option, right? So I think that's a, one of the key tenets for anything in cloud. So I think it's important for us to recognize that. I think Apex is basically a way by which customers pay for what they consume, right? So that's a, absolutely a key tenet for how, how we want to design Apex. So it's absolutely right. And, and among those services are high-performance computing services. Now I was not familiar with that as an offering in the Apex line. What constitutes a high-performance computing Apex service? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I mean, this conference is great. Like you said, you know, I, uh, there's so many HPC and high-performance computing folks here. But one of the things is, you know, fundamentally, if you look at the high-performance computing ecosystem, it is quite complex, right? Um, and when you call it as an Apex HPC or Apex offering offer, it brings a lot of the cloud economics and cloud, you know, experience to the HPC offer. So fundamentally, it's about our ability for customers to pay for what they consume. It's where Dell takes a lot of the day-to-day -day management of the infrastructure on our own so that customers don't need to do the grunge work of managing it, and they can really focus on the actual workload which actually they run on this HPC ecosystem. So it, 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 is, it is high performance computing offer, but instead of them buying the infrastructure, running all of that by themselves, we make it super easy for customers to consume and manage it across you know, proven designs which Dell always implements across these verticals. So what, what makes it a high performance computing offering as opposed to, to a rack of power edge servers? What do you add in to make it HPC? Ah, that's a great question. So I mean, you know, um, so this is a platform, right? So we are not just selling infrastructure by the drink. So we actually are, fundamentally it's based on, you know, we, we, we launched two validated designs, uh, one for life sciences, one for manufacturing. So we actually know how these piece parts work together, how they actually are validated, design, tested solution. And we also, it's a platform, so we actually integrate the softwares on the top, so it's just not the infrastructure. So we actually integrate a cluster manager, we integrate a job scheduler, we integrate a container orchestration layer. So a lot of these things, customers have to do it by themselves, right, if they buy the infrastructure. So by, basically we are actually giving a platform and an ecosystem for our customers to run their workloads. So make it easy for them to actually consume those. Now is this, uh, is this available on premises? For a customer? Yeah, so we, we, we make it available to customers both ways. So we make it available on-prem for customers who want to, you know, kind of want to take that, take that economics. We also make it available in a colo environment if the customers want to actually, you know, extend colo as their on-prem environment. So we do both. 
What are, what are the requirements for a customer, before you roll that equipment in, mm -hmm. how do they sort of have to set the groundwork for? Uh, for well, I, I think, you know, fundamentally it starts off with what the actual use case is, right? So, so if you really look at, you know, the two validated designs we talked about, you know, one for, you know, healthcare, uh, life sciences and one other one for manufacturing, they do have fundamentally different requirements in terms of what you need from those infrastructure systems. Uh, so, you know, the customers initially figure out, okay, how do they actually require something which is going to require a lot of memory intensive loads or do they actually require something which has got a lot of compute power. So, you know, it all depends on what they would require in terms of the workloads to be. And then we do have t-shirt sizing. So we do have small, medium, large. We have, you know, multiple infrastructure options, uh, CPU core options. Sometimes the customer would also want to say, you know what, as long as the regular CPUs, I also want some GPU power on top of that. So those are determinations uh, typically a customer makes as part of their ecosystem, right? Uh, and so those are things which would they would talk to us about to say, okay, what is my best option in terms of, you know, kind of workloads I want to run, and then they can make a determination in terms of how they would actually go and execute. So this, this is probably a particularly interesting time to be looking at something like HPC via Apex with um, with this season of rolling thunder from various partners that you have. You know, yep. um, um, we're, we're all expecting that Intel is going to be rolling out new CPU sets. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from a PowerEdge perspective, you have your 16th generation of PowerEdge servers coming out. Um, you know, PCIe Gen 5 and all of the components from partners like NVIDIA and Broadcom, et cetera, plugging into them. Yep. Um, what, what, is that, what does that look like from your, from your perch? in terms of talking to customers who maybe, maybe they're doing things traditionally and they're likely to be not, not, fif, not 15G, not, mm -hmm. not generation 15 servers, yep. but probably more like 14. Yep. You're offering a pretty huge uplift. Yep. What, what do those conversations look like? Well, I mean, so talking about partners, right? I mean, of course, Dell, you know, we, we, we don't bring any solutions to the market without really working with all our partners, whether that's at the infrastructure level, like you talked about, you know, Intel, AMD, Broadcom, right, all the chip vendors, all the way to software layer, right? So we have cluster managers, we have Kubernetes orchestrators, so we usually, what we do is we bring the best in class, whether it's a software player or a hardware player, right, and we bring it together as a solution. So we do give the customers a choice and the customers always want to pick what they know actually is awesome, right? So they all, that, that we actually do that. Um, and you know, and one of the main aspects of, especially when you talk about these things, bringing it as a service, right? We take a lot of guesswork away from our customer, right? Um, you know, one of the good examples of HPC is capacity, right? So customers, these are a very, you know, I would say very intensive systems, very complex systems, right? So customers would like to buy certain amount of capacity, they would like to grow and, you know, come back, right? So give it, giving them the flexibility to actually consume more if they want, giving them the buffer and coming down, all of those things are very important as we actually design these things, right? And that takes some, you know, customers are given a choice, but it actually, they don't need to worry about, oh, you know, what happens if I actually have a spike, right? There's already buffer capacity built in. So those are awesome things when we talk about things as a service. When customers are doing their ROI analysis, buying CapEx on-prem versus, versus using Apex, is there a point, of, is there a crossover point typically at which it's probably a better deal for them to, to go on-prem? On yeah, I mean, it, 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 like specifically talking about HPC, right? I mean, why, you know, we do have, a ma no, a lot of customers consume high performance compute in public cloud, right? Uh, that's not going to go away, right? But there are certain reasons why they would look at on-prem or they would look at, for example, uh, a cola environment, right? One of the main reasons they would like to do that is purely have to do with cost, right? Um, these are pretty expensive systems, right? Um, there is a lot of ingress, egress. Uh, there is a lot of data going back and forth, right? Public cloud, you know, it costs money to put data in, or actually pull data back, right? And the second one is data residency and security requirements, right? A lot of these things are probably proprietary set of information. We talked about life sciences, there's a lot of research, right? Uh, manufacturing, a lot of these things are just, just in time decision making, right? You are on a factory floor, you got to be able to do that now. There is a latency requirement, so I mean, I think a lot of things play, you know, plays into this outside of just cost. But data residency requirements, ingress egress are big things. And you know, when you talk about mass moments of data, you want to put and pull it back in. Um, they would like to kind of keep it close, keep it local, and you know, may, may get, get a get a get a better price point. But nevertheless, I mean, we were just talking to Ian Coley from AWS, and he was talking about how customers have the need to sort of move workloads back and forth between the cloud and on-prem, and mm -hmm. that's something that they're addressing with outposts. Uh, Yep. You're very much in the in the on-prem world. Do you have or will you have uh, 
facilities for customers to move workloads back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, Dell's cloud strategy is multi-cloud, right? So we basically, uh, so it kind of falls into three, I mean, we, some customers, some workloads are suited always for public cloud, it's easier to consume, right? There are, you know, customers also consume on-prem, the customers also consume in Colo. And we also have, like Dell has amazing piece of software, like storage software, you know. We make some of these things available for customers to consume a software IP on their public cloud, right? So, you know, so this is our multi-cloud strategy, so we announced a project in Alpine and Dell Tech World. So, you know, if you look at those, basically customers are saying, I love your Dell IP on this, on this product, on this storage, can you make it available through, in this public environment, whether, you know, it's any of the hyperscale players. So we do all of that, right? So I think it's, it shows that, you know, it's not always tied to an infrastructure, right? Customers want to consume the best thumb, and if we need to be consumed in an hyperscaler, we can make it available. Do you uh, support containers? Yeah, we do support containers. Uh, on HPC, we have a, we have two container orchestrators we have to support. We, we, we have an Aptainer Singularity. We also have a Kubernetes uh, container options. A few customers, both options. What kind of customers are you signing up for the, uh, for the HPC offerings? Are, are they universities, research centers, or does it tend to be smaller it's, companies? It, it's, it's, you know, the last, Three days, this conference has been great. We probably had like, you know, many, many customers talking to us about HPC, somewhere in the range of 40, 50 customers. I would probably say a lot of interest from educational institutions, universities, research, to your point. Uh, a lot of interest from manufacturing, um, uh, factory floor automation, uh, a lot of customers who want to do dynamic simulations on the factory floor. Um, there is also quite a bit of interest from life sciences, uh, pharmacies, uh, because, you know, like I said, we have, uh, Two designs, one on life sciences, one on manufacturing, both with different dynamics on the infrastructure. Um, so yeah, quite a, quite a few interest, uh, definitely from academics, uh, from life sciences, uh, manufacturing. We also have a lot of uh, financials, uh, big banks, you know, uh, who wants to simulate uh, a lot of the, you know, brokerage, uh, a lot of a lot of financial data because we have some, you know, really optimized hardware we announced in Dell uh, for especially for financial services. So there's quite a bit of interest from financial services as well. We often think of Dell as uh, as the organization that democratizes uh, all things in IT eventually, and, uh, and 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 in that context, you know, this is supercomputing 22. Yep. HPC is like the little sibling trailing around, trailing behind the supercomputing trend. But we definitely have seen this move out of just purely academia into the business world. Mm -hmm. um, Dell is clearly a leader in that space. How has Apex overall been doing since you rolled out that strategy? What two couple? It's been it's been a couple of years now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been less than two years. Uh, so how, I think how are how are how are mainstream Dell customers embracing Apex versus the traditional, uh, you know, maybe eighteen months to three year upgrade cycle capex? Yeah, I mean, I look. I, I think there is uh, absolutely strong momentum for Apex, um, and like we Paul pointed out earlier. Uh, we started with, uh, you know, making the infrastructure and the platforms available to customers to consume as a service, right? Um, we have uh, options for customers, you know, to where Dell can fully manage everything end to end, take a lot of the pain points away, like we talked about, because, you know, managing a cloud scale, you know, uh, basically environment for the customers. We also have options where customers would say, you know what, I actually have a pretty sophisticated IT organization. I want Dell to manage the infrastructure, but up to this level in the layer, up to the guest operating system. I'll take care of the rest, right? So we are seeing customers who are coming to us with various requirements in terms of saying, I can do up to here, but you take all of this pain point away from me, or you do everything for me. It all depends on the customer. So we do have wide interest. So our, I would say our products and the portfolio set in Apex is expanding. And we're also learning, right? We're all getting a lot of feedback from customers in terms of what they would like to see on some of these offers. Like the example we just talked about in terms of making some of the software IP available on a public cloud where they look at Dell as a software player, right? Uh, that's also is absolutely critical. So I think we are giving customers a lot of choices. Our, I would say the choice factor and you know, we are democratizing, like you said, you know, expanding in terms of the customer choices. And we're I think almost, it's- We're almost out of time, but I do want to be sure we get to uh, Dell Validated Designs, which yep. you've mentioned a couple of times. How specific are the, well, I and mean, what's the purpose of these designs? Mm -hmm. How specific are they? They, they are, I mean, I, you know, so the, the, most of these valid, I mean, again, we look at these industries, right, and we look at understanding exactly how would, I mean, 
we have huge embedded base of customers utilizing HPC across our ecosystem in Dell, right? So a lot of them are CapEx customers. We actually do have an active customer profile. So these validated designs takes into account a lot of customer feedback, a lot of partner feedback in terms of how they utilize this. And when you build these solutions, which are kind of end-to-end -end and integrated, you need to start anchoring on something, right? And a lot of these things have different characteristics. So these validated design basically prove to us that, you know, it, it gives a very good jump off point for customers. That's the way I look at it, right? So a lot of them will come to the table with, they don't come to the blank sheet of paper when they say, oh, you know what, I am this, this is my characteristics of what I want. I think this is a great point for me to start from, right? So I think that that gives that, and plus it's the power of validation, really, right? We test, validate, integrate, so they know it works, right? So uh, all of those are hypercritical when you talk to them. And you mentioned healthcare, uh, you, you mentioned um uh, uh, manufacturing, other manufacturing, designs Manufacturing, we way. just announced the validated design for financial services uh, uh, as well, I think a couple of days ago in the event, so yeah, we are expanding all those DVDs so that we, we, can, we can give our customers a choice. We are out of time. Right, Satish uh, Ayer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. At the center of the move to subscription, to everything as a service, everything is on a subscription basis, you really are on the leading edge of where, of where your industry is going. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Paul, thank you, Dave. Paul Gellin with Dave Nicholson here from Supercomputing 22 in Dallas. Wrapping up the show this afternoon and uh, stay with us for, they'll be have more soon. Mm -hmm.